right, folks. Well, I'm glad to be uh, back here with you again. I was here, I think it was two weeks ago, and uh, talked about Microsoft Graph and accessing email. We're going to do actually the same exact thing this time. So if you were here two weeks ago, you'll get a nice somewhat review. But if you weren't here, I'm going to start from scratch, assume you haven't done this before, and kind of walk you through this process. So the general idea is that with Microsoft Graph, we can tie all kinds of organizational data into our apps, of course. So for example, we could tie in uh, email. That was one thing I talked about uh, two weeks ago. We could tie into Teams conversations, files from OneDrive and more. In fact, there's gonna be a Microsoft Learn module that I'm gonna introduce you to about that as well. But we're gonna focus on calendar events. You know, how many times have you gone to set up something like you're in an app, working with a customer, whatever it may be, and then you have to go run off to your calendar because you're pretty sure you had talked about a particular topic with someone, but you can't remember when it was, who it was. You just know it was a related customer. Now, in addition to that, we can tie into device information, security, tasks, groups, users, and way, way, way more. In fact, I'll have a, a quick intro to this if you're brand new in just a moment. Now, let's assume then that you have an app and you're gonna authenticate your users. I showed something like this last time, two weeks ago. Once we've authenticated the user, we can request very specific permissions, such as I wanna get to a user's email, or I wanna get to their calendar events, or something along those lines. And we can do that by requesting an access token. And I kinda like to think of it as a specialized key that only fits in certain doors. And we can then take that key and pass it to Microsoft Graph and then get things like calendar events. Now, everything I'm gonna be covering in this short 15 minute session here in demo can be found in a Microsoft Learn module. So uh, last time I mentioned, we talked about email. So if you wanna learn about that, you'll find it in the same general location here. Uh, this particular link at the bottom, this will take you right to the calendar events one that we're gonna be covering here. And then there's also a third one on access, accessing OneDrive files. So if you wanna do that, you could uh, certainly tie that in as well. Now, the reason again we're doing this is really to avoid a couple of things, to avoid user context switching, jumping out of the custom app you've built to email or some other location to find a calendar event in this case, but also just to pull in data that might be relevant for your app. And that's really where this, what this is all about, is pulling in that organizational intelligence and data uh, into apps so that users can get everything they need and it's not just a database app. It also lets them leverage what they've already stored somewhere else in the org. Now to do this, you need to create a .NET Core app. Now you could do that in Visual Studio again, or you could use the .NET CLI if you prefer. Uh, and then you need to register your app in Azure Active Directory. Now, last time I also mentioned the same thing, uh, the Learn module, the link I just showed a minute earlier, it's gonna have step-by-step -step guidance on how you can register your app with Azure Active Directory, even if you're brand new to this. It's actually very straightforward. Uh, we walk you through screenshots and what to click on and what to put in and uh, kind of explain it along the way. So you don't need to uh, memorize any of that actually, it'll walk you through it. Now, what we're gonna spend most of the rest of today on is we're gonna talk a little bit about middleware in .NET Core. We're gonna talk about a custom graph calendar client class, how we can inject it, and then ultimately how we can render events. Now, in order to uh, do this though, we need some code, and I'm gonna see where my PowerPoint moved it to. So let me switch this around real quick. So when you go to the Microsoft Learn module, there's gonna be a GitHub repo that you can clone. And you're gonna notice that there's a begin and an end solution. Now I'm gonna work with the end solution here, mainly because I don't have a ton of time. But one of the things I wanna point out before we get going is I talked about that specialized kind of key or access token as we call it. And that has the rights to do certain things. Now in this particular app, it covers three learn modules. So we can get to the user's profile and read it. We can get to the user's presence and read it, undo that. We can get to the mailbox settings and read those. We're gonna do that to get to some time zone settings for calendar events. 
we can read their mail, their calendars, and then on files, if you go through that learn module, it'll show you how to not only download files, but also upload files. So we can do read write in that case. Now we're gonna focus mainly right here, calendars.read. Now, before I show you that, let me go ahead and let me start this up. You can see all my previous commands, which is not what I wanted. And we'll give this just a sec to build, um, but before that fit, well, it's already done, but I'm gonna show you one more thing in case you're brand new to this. Now, I'm already uh, where I want, but it's quick to get back. If you haven't been to Microsoft Graph Explorer, it is a phenomenal tool. So you can go to aka.ms slash GE, aka.ms slash GE, and then on the left here, I'm just gonna type calendar, and you'll notice several things come up. I could find a meeting time, schedule, I can do all this fun stuff. Now, I'm not currently logged in, but as Brian mentioned a little bit earlier, you can go get a free Microsoft 365 developer tenant, and then you could log in with one of the users that you'll get in that tenant. And that's actually what I'm gonna do for the demo in a moment. But I'm not gonna sign in in this case because I just wanna show you the basics. So if we go to my events for the next week, notice down here at the bottom, it pulled back a bunch of JSON data. And this is my anonymous, in this case, calendar events. Now, the part I wanna call out is right here. Notice we're going to me slash calendar view. That's one of the API calls. It's a RESTful API you can see that you can call. And in fact, if you click on this little I here, you can even learn more about what you can do with calendar view. Now, I only wanna get for the next week though, so notice that it plugged in a start date time and an end date time. And we're gonna do something similar in the code demo I'm gonna run. And then of course you can click on run query. Now you can do this with all of these. Um, now some of these right now, like I can't find a meeting time or schedule because I'm not logged in. But if I were to log in, I could do everything. Very powerful tool if you haven't seen it. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is actually run the app and it runs on localhost 5001. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, this is one of my free Microsoft 365 developer tenant accounts I'm gonna use. So like I said, you can sign up for one of these. We'll click on it. I'm gonna go ahead and log in really quick here. And I have two factor on, put that in. All right, now this will take me to the home page, and I'm just in a temporary browser here. And notice it says, welcome Dan. Well, that just made a call to slash me. Um, I talked about this a little bit last time, but it basically gets the user's profile. And then I also made a call to get the user's presence. Right now in my kind of fake account, it hasn't seen me in Teams for a while, so it thinks I'm not available. But notice up top, I can go to email. We covered this last time. But I can also go to calendar. Now, I only have one event in there, and that was to give the presentation this morning. But if we went off to you know, teams.microsoft.com, I could go there, add a new event, and then um, I'm gonna show you how we can display these events and get these events. All right, so that's kind of what the app does. Now, let's go on back now that we've seen that, and let's talk about how this kind of works from the flow that I showed earlier. So notice the calendars.read. What'll happen is you're gonna have to have middleware. And this will do all the heavy lifting for authenticating the user, getting the access token, token, making sure you can call Microsoft Graph, all those fun things. And that's done in configure services. Now, while I'm focusing on .NET Core here, keep in mind that all these same concepts can be done with many different languages and frameworks. We just chose to focus on this learn module in this case. But what this line here does is it goes into that app settings and it grabs these scopes. These are the permissions in essence that I need. And it's gonna use those in a moment. But this is really the big part here. We're gonna add authentication. Okay, and these are extension methods they're called in C-sharp. We're gonna add Microsoft Identity Web App. You saw me just use that actually to log in and things. And we're gonna to enable token acquisition to call a downstream API. What's a downstream API? Well, in this case, once I log in and then I request a access token, I can then use that key again to call Microsoft Graph. Well, that's the downstream API. So we're basically with just like three lines of code, and there's a little bit more you'll see right here, but you know, three main lines of code, we're enabling authentication and all the fun to make this possible to call Microsoft Graph.
not too bad. And if you're new to this, um, I mentioned this last time probably, it's not something I actually write that much because once you put it in the app, it's there and it works, so you just leave it. So you can just borrow from your own code if you'd like and do that type of thing. Now, we also add Microsoft Graph. This is gonna grab those uh, scope permissions and the URL to call. Again, that calls into here. There's our downstream API. There's our graph call. Um, and then we're gonna do in-memory token caching. There's a couple options there. Now, the rest of this is really just making it where every page in this Razor app is authenticated. So you do have to be authenticated to get to any page, and that's kind of what the rest of this does. Now, the final piece I wanna show you, I'm gonna skip past some bonus code, is notice these two right here. We're gonna have the ability to inject a graph profile client and a graph calendar client. And that's the one I'm gonna to jump to now. So if you've done this before with .NET Core, you probably know all about dependency injection. That's all we're doing here is setting that up. Now, this is where the fun starts though. Uh, you gotta get the middleware registered properly, but then you can start making the graph calls. You'll notice over here to the left, I have a graph folder and I have a calendar client, an email client, a files client. So I've kind of broken this up by uh, single responsibility, if you will. But what we're gonna do is inject into the constructor of this graph client, calendar client, uh, a logger, and then this is the, the big important one, a graph service client. Now, what is that? Well, that came from some NuGet packages. And so if we went into our csproj file, you're gonna notice I have some Microsoft identity assemblies or NuGet packages, but I also have a Microsoft Graph one. That's important because inside of that, it has a graph service client. And think of this as really the doorway to make these Microsoft Graph calls. So we're gonna inject that into here. And then I'm gonna have a get events. Now, events are always a little bit tricky because there's time zones. So also a time zone could be passed in. We can get that through Microsoft Graph as well so that we can make sure we're getting the proper events for the user's time zone. So that's why this is being passed in. Now, from there, what we're gonna do is a little bit of filtering. So notice we have a uh, start of the week and end of the week. So from today, seven days out. And then what we're gonna do is feed that into what's called a query option. It's the view settings for the query, kind of like our where clauses, if you will. So notice we add in the start date time and the end date time, and these are the properties that we wanna basically filter on. Now, once we've set today and a week from today, then we can actually make the call. Now, remember I showed you earlier, it was slash me slash calendar view. Well, by using the Microsoft Graph.NET Core SDK, we can actually call into our graph service client and treat this as a dynamic API that we can call into, a chained API, I should say. So we're gonna say, go to the user, logged in user's profile, but I don't wanna get just the profile, I wanna get their calendar view. And then I'm gonna filter the request based on the start and end date. So we're gonna pass those view options in. Now I'm also passing in a header for the user's time zone. So we make sure we get the right ones. And you might've noticed when I was back here in Graph Explorer, there's a lot of properties that get passed back by default. I may not want all those. So I can project or select exactly what I want. And that's what we're doing right here. I'm gonna grab the subject, the organizer, the start and the end date. Now that means that it'll really minimize the amount of data sent over the wire, which is always a good thing. You only want to retrieve what you actually need. Now, in addition to that, uh, we have an order by. We're going to order by start date time. Now, start date time is actually, uh, in this case, it's a nested property. If you go back and look at the JSON, and this is how we can get to it. And then we're going to do this asynchronously. All right, now that's not too bad. I mean, if you're new to this, you may have never done it before, but once you have this graph service client injected in a .NET Core app and you have your middleware set up, now it's just a matter of learning the API and you'll get nice IntelliSense and code help and stuff like that in VS Code and Visual Studio and other editors. Now the final piece is we need to now use this graph calendar client. So I mentioned earlier, it's registered 
in the configuration, and it, that means it's injectable. Now, notice that we have a graph profile client in my calendar page here and a graph calendar client. These are both injected. So now the last part is I'm going to get the user's time zone. All right, we're going to do that by making a separate call to get the user's mailbox settings. And then this is the call we just looked at. We're going to call into the calendar client, get the events, and then I'm going to pass their uh, time zone in. And from there, we get back, we hope, some events. Now, at this point, if you've done Razor syntax at all with MVC or Razor pages, you know the rest of this. We're going to check if the user is authenticated. If they are, do we have any calendar events? And if we do, let's loop through the calendar events. And then the rest of this just writes out the subject and the start and things like that. And that's really what you saw right there. All right. And if I had more calendar events, of course, it would just keep uh, looping through those. All right. So that is an example of how we can get started. So to kind of wrap this up, if you would like to get more information about this, you can go to the link that you see on your screen here. And I would encourage you to not just think in terms of, you know, calendar events. You may say, I don't need calendar events. I need this, this, and this. Again, this could be Teams chats, it could be calendar events, it could be email, it could be files, and the list just is huge of what you could pull in. Trending documents, all kinds of fun. What's so great about this is you bring the data where the user works every day, you avoid the context shifts, and it's very secure with Microsoft Identity. So I'd encourage you to go through the Learn module, and I'm out of time, so I'm gonna turn it back over here. Thanks a lot for listening. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dan. Uh, really great demo. And we can get some comments that people appreciate the uh, handling like time zones and other things that may not come up very frequently. So good to see that kind of well-rounded, how do you encapsulate the entire solution, not just a point, you know, get one data thing in there. Awesome. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dan.